just reiterating again, mm. you don't, you just don't remember playing against me as a junior, do you? <laughs> Even though you've brought me here, yeah. it doesn't jog Nothing. up any memories. Yeah, maybe. What about do we play like Gordon versus Hawkesbury? Like I'm talking no. kid stuff. Because I remember you. Fat leg spin. You've reminded hair. me so many times of knocking me over, but I three to- three or four times. It's embedded somewhere in my brain that just can't be accessed. Once at Hawkesbury under 13s, <laughs> caught and bowled. <laughs> caught and bowled. You, Actually, you tried you to work scorecard? through the onside. Do you have a scorecard? You, and it, ju- it just got on you early. No. Okay. I used to play spin pretty well as a kid too. Well, yeah, well. Yeah, clearly not that well. No, no, you would have been a good player. But. <laughs> and then once at Tantalan Oval, full toss. Tantalian, caught, yeah. Caught, I, caught I it uh, deep mid-wicket. I remember Chris Kavanagh knocking me over at Tantalian Oval. No, um, that's not, he wasn't in the team. Okay. But yeah. look, we're back here at North Sydney Oval. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Can we? You yeah. just want to still... Yeah, that's right. I'll do the intro. <laughs> uh, and then okay. North Sydney Oval. Uh, so we'll do that now. <laughs> Okay. okay, what I remember right. about um, playing against you in North Sydney Oval is... Did you get um, to play on North Sydney Oval number one or two? Both. But we'll come to that. <laughs> okay. But I played against you here and um, you and Pete Forrest both made hundreds. I, I do remember that. Yeah, when you could bat. Yeah, and I opened the, were you both, were both opened the Yeah, bat? I think yeah. you, yeah. You might have opened, he batted three. And yeah. he hit a he hit one over this stand, I think, <laughs> yeah. or over where we're sitting at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I remember when you brought up that hundred, like you, you, because you're a state contracted player, mm. uh, and you, you celebrated, like you celebrated like someone on TV. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? Remember or, or that. You don't, you know, so, but what do you mean? So I, did, like I, didn't, like I didn't, didn't do the Matthew Hayden. No, but it was. Jesus I think you did like a jump whatever. punch, you know, like and. You know, this is grade cricket. I, like I, people just sort of acknowledge the crowd, but like you're, you was like, yeah, frosted blonde. Can we tips. fast forward to? It was probably the biggest road in all of Sydney. But how many did you make the week after? Uh, I remember. So you guys <laughs> yeah. made heaps because uh, you had a good team. Yeah. You guys made heaps, and it was my first game batting at North Sydney number one, which is like a spiritually significant place for me as mm. a follower of the Bears in mm. in league. Yeah. So it was quite important, and um, I came out yeah. to bat. Uh, I, I recall it being like fading light. Uh, we were like four for l- not a lot. And John Hastings was like, John Hastings was like bowling balls that were like going through the chest, you know, like, like, like a professional would. And I hadn't, I hadn't done that before. I would have been like 72 kilos, maybe running a bit of cardio during the week. I learned how to play straight. And, uh, you know, I came out to bat and I was just scared, you know, yeah. and, uh, mm. and I think, I might have been. I think I made zero. I think yeah, I literally played one of those shots where it was like it was just a good length ball, not drivable length, and I just sort of hit Three through the line off the splice <laughs> point <laughs> and just see you later. Like you don't belong at this level in any way. And uh, yeah, we we got smashed in that game. Yeah, but you do you have some fond fond memories here? You've got what is your biggest score here? Let's just get at to, North, let's skip uh, to at it. North Sydney Oval. Uh, mm. I made. I made 79 <laughs> once against Penrith <laughs> and three other guys made hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. North so here we are. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, a, a cold open to change mm. proceedings for TGC. Um, mm. On the show this week, if you do want that kind of convention of how we open the show, uh, you know, what, what we're going to be talking about the sock is, you know, are the scorches too good and scary? Mm. Um, what is a spin camp and a scarified deck? And how do you say scarified or is it scarified or is it a mix of scary and scarring? Um, England can't play white ball cricket anymore. Is it because of mott ball, which is how an Irishman might say mothball? Uh, India and New Zealand doing some highly memorable white ball stuff that everyone's talking about on the street and by water coolers. Um, ask TGC, which I'm looking forward to doing yeah. with you. Uh, it concerns milking linguistics, group sex with a peripheral England cricketer and being appalled by both your cricketing and sexual technique after reviewing <laughs> it on video. Uh, this episode, All relatable, yeah. This episode may be... Um, by extension, is brought to you by no one anymore uh, after Budgie departed. <laughs> As you can tell, where are we at the moment? Uh, you know? <laughs> we've had some, we've had some interest. We've had some interest, but if if you do want to get in touch about presenting the grade cricketer, being a sponsor, uh, grade cricketer at gmail.com can give you the data and all that sort of shit. Uh, a lot of people listen to it still. Uh, 
a couple of other things. Uh, our, our man, our smooth voice, velvety voiced, muscle uh, laden, rig king, uh, wit um, deluxe friend he goes he's back tomorrow uh, right. for the great cricketer wonderful break That's good news we'll be doing patreon you can get all of our patreon loose dark raw shit patreon.com forward slash great cricketer uh to those who have bought tickets to our live shows in india which we announced last week they are pretty much sold out uh incredible stuff so we're going to be there we're going to be in india for 16 days doing six cities eight shows in those cities i believe it's bangalore chennai hyderabad uh, Delhi, Gurgaon, and Mumbai. Uh, I think a couple of tickets for Delhi remain. Get involved. Uh, and, and Gurgaon. But, yeah, they've gone really quickly. Thank you to everyone who got tickets. Uh, and to those who are texting saying, can you start the shows later and stuff like that, it's difficult, you know, like just to respond to each individual request about what suits you. But very pumped about going to India. Sock. Uh, yeah. I think you've been there before. I don't know. Six, you've done some stuff there. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Six, so do you get, how many tests are you fitting in? Two. So we're going to be able to, we're, we're not going to get to Nagpur, but we're going to get to Delhi for a couple of days. Great. So yeah, um, nice. yeah. very pumped for that. We're going to go to two days of Delhi and mm. do a bit of side mouth from there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's get into the show. Mm. Obviously, um, guest co-host Steve O'Keefe, uh, Australian Test cricketer, currently with the Sixers in the mm. BBL. Mm. Uh, you, you were in the press the other day for a hundred BBL games, saying mm. you were happier than ever. <laughs> um, can't be that happy if you're sitting here um, <laughs> with some internet bloke. <laughs> At North Sydney Oval, or maybe you've just got such perspective that you're like, I'm I'm available to anyone. Yeah, no, I I I I've as it as it said with Connie, I I'm very happy. I'm in the happiest space I've ever been. You know, like cricket, you can become really resentful and you know bitter at the game. And when I got sacked from the Blues, I was really pissed off to be honest. So it's probably taken three years. I mean, I'm still a bit pissed off, but... Why uh, is that? Is that is that because the team hasn't performed and you took 300 wickets at 25? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, and, and, and a lot of people are like, gee, wouldn't mind you being available for a, a certain test tour coming up? Is that why? No, I think... Uh, yeah, what are they? One from 16 or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's counting? Who's counting? Um, yeah. yeah, no. I, yeah, I, yeah, one of the board members last week said on this show that the senior players aren't performing. It's like, well, you had a senior player. Yeah. Uh, you just didn't want to use who him. Who was performing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was a fair call. Trim a bit of the fat. Um... But yeah, no, we're going big bash is like what two months of the year. I think they're going to shorten next year. Mm. There's you've got every reason to be happy about it. Now we're out of COVID. I mean, you can go around. You can still circuit when you play mm. big bash. Mm. I mean, it starts mm. at seven, so yeah. you can get home at two or three. Yeah, yeah you're great. Sleep it off. Bowl mm. your four overs. Hide at forty five, and mm. still sort of have a decent crack mm. at it. So that's probably why I'm at the happiest I've ever been. Mm. It's 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 fitting into my lifestyle more than ever. It's isn't it amazing how many cricketers like find a centre or whatever you want to call it like mm. what we would call like later in their career like so many Aussie cricketers even the guys mm. in the test level seem to have mm. found some kind of uh, you know m maturity or equilibrium in their lives whether it's you know Warner Kawaja oh, these are guys you came th you know, yeah, through yeah, with yeah, yeah. Uh, at this age and, it's, and and with sports science and stuff like that you can extend your career a little bit uh, later than what you originally I, could right I told you know I, was, I remember saying to Smudge I was like the Tampa Brigade's the best thing that's ever happened to you you know you can have 12 months off you can just chill out go and do what you want to do rest the body up and then recharge and go again yeah. so and then no doubt he agreed with <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, he's, it was a great 12 months for him <laughs> it was fantastic um mitch marsh is in the same boat he's got yeah. an injury at the moment and he's like 31 mm. you know and these guys um it, it, cricket's going to get into a funny space because right? like these guys are sort of at the back end of their test careers there's all these t20 tournaments mm. opening up but they're going to earn like squillions of dollars which will go into the women's IPL and they're going to have big hard choices to make do they continue to sort of Sean Marsh it out and be 38 39 playing for their state or do they just you know be mercenaries and sell themselves to the highest bidder I know what I would do in mm. that case mm. um, grade cricket right yeah yeah. Mm. that's why I'm here yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the low hanging fruit is uh, this a come and get me play to yeah. other grade clubs like should yeah, Manly yeah. be concerned yeah. I, I like to uh, yeah sell myself out to uh, all clubs at the start of the season then when no one's interested just goes I'm going to stick with Manly and you know stick to my roots and you know go back for the love of the game um, how do you sell, sell yourself out to other clubs like is it a one pager you put together or you leave like business cards on the doorstep of the club president I 
generally go yeah. to the club presidents yeah. or the money bags. Mossman's yeah. generally where you go first. You, t- yeah. you knock on that one, yeah. shake that tree first. <laughs> um, I hope they haven't sold out to some overseas like Don Bess, who's you know, yeah. is, you know paying squillions yeah. or a young fast bowler and sort of see if you can manipulate your way in there. Fortunately, Pete Forrest is there at the moment at Mossman. Maybe he's taking yeah. all the cash. And, ah. and he's, but he's actually coaching as well. I have no interest in that. Yeah, I got, I yeah, play course, every yeah. Saturday, mm. every second Saturday and the occasional Sunday. Yep. Um, would be my plan but it, for some reason that's not working with most grey clubs so mm. mainly it is mm. okay mm. Oh, it's a shame yeah um, <laughs> for those who may be wondering it's obviously like a um, bit of an alternative record today we are at the, the, the spiritual home of North Sydney Oval um, the windows are open because we'd um, melt to death if not um, so if you do get a little bit of background noise that is um, just some workers generally um, continuing mm. to gentrify um, Sydney and make it inaccessible <laughs> uh, to people unless you have old money so yeah. uh, apologies for any background sound there and if, uh, it, if it is wobbling as well don't be alarmed it's just the room yeah. we're in it may, yeah. it may collapse it uh, may not right. we're recording on Wednesday uh, Sock has a game tomorrow night against the Heat and if he can't make it um, it's because he has perished or uh, become deeply minutes. injured I'm a hell of a way to go we were saying beforehand like you know I do want my ashes scattered at North Sydney over. I never thought I'd actually die <laughs> yeah but it would be an easy transport for the ashes <laughs> it's just like not to be confused with the actual ashes, uh, which is a cricket tour. Uh, anyway, uh, but 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 that's where we are for a little bit of ambience. And um, but but helpfully, if we actually showed you North Sydney Oval, that would mean the the, the vision was us. backlit. So you're just gonna have to trust if you're watching on YouTube. That's where we are. Could be anywhere. Uh, could be in a jail cell. Um, we were not nearly went to one once, but that's a different story. Walkabout Hotel. Anyway, um, isn't it funny, Sock, speaking of like uh, evolving to a place of maturity, you know, others might argue a couple of years ago, maybe even further, um, you were a man with, you know, frosted blonde tips uh, <laughs> in the press for the wrong reasons, um, hobbling around uh, with, with, a, with a calf or a hamstring and, um, and you know, um, enfant terrible, as they'd say uh, in mangled French, but it's actually your old test captain that's that guy now. <laughs> Oh, it's, I was, it's I funny. was like, how, are we, how is he going well, to get... <laughs> we had some complaints last week that, that, that Clark wasn't delved into enough. I thought, all right, right well, I'll just get one of... You know, I, I, Cowan played under Clark, but he's a, a yeah. sophisticated, yeah. articulate man and, um, uh, you know, has to be careful with his words. words. Um, yeah. You know, what is it like... I still being, contract being a, a bit of never being careful with my words, yeah. <laughs> no, I know, you're people obviously... Um, you, you've got people who well, are listening to every word well, you look, say to get you in trouble <laughs> again. But, so uh, when, yeah, what's, what's that like? When I was when I was 20, I got the, the car pay DM tattoo, which yep. I'm, I'm showing you there. You know, yeah. Michael Clark uh, was my idol. Good too. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's nice. Put on about ten kilos mm. ever since they got rid of the two k time trial, mm. which is a, a godsend. We'll but to that. I, I, yeah, I idolised Pup obviously. I had the blonde tips, had yep. the had the tattoo, um, and then you know you sort of fast forward nearly twenty years, and it's funny how you know the wheel has come full circle, and now mm. he's idolising me. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 he's like, how can I get on TGC <laughs> from Big Sports <laughs> Breakfast? How do I become more like Sock? Yeah. Uh, so. So yeah, that was um, Carlos, and mm. uh, yeah, that was that was entertaining to say the least. My mm. girlfriend works in news reporting, yes. and she's like, "Thank God for this scandal because it just it took up all the airwaves." Yeah. Um, but I don't know what more else to say about it. I mean, mm. what, what else do we want to say? Except uh, no, no, no. no. It's a, it just it just has to be remarked upon. I think. Yeah. Uh, like like my, my view on it was, and I'm sorry for people like that. The the main part of what happened was pretty, was probably distressing. Didn't need to see it, but then like ten subplots <laughs> underneath of the one of the best contributions to internet culture, <laughs> prob- possibly in the history of the internet. So Some of the uh, comments were great, like, yeah. Carlos, get ready for a broken arm. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But I was, I was saying that to Cowan, like, the way, the way he said uh, the, the C word yeah. uh, was like... It, it sounded like something that you would hear on a cricket field. Yeah, you know, Pratt like, and Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, it just we, we, had, we had to note it. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're sitting here at North Sydney Oval, uh, Sock, and I want to I want to talk Test cricket first. We're, we're going to go hard on Australia India next week because it, the Test will be starting in three days. But mm. I still think it's the main game in town. David Warner made comments the other day to the effect of like Test cricket still the main game in town, which I thought was an interesting thing for him to say post the yeah. AB medal uh, or whatever they're called now. And um, <laughs> we're only a mere a hundred or two hundred meters away from the ground that the men's test team scarified yeah. North Sydney number twos to try and recreate Indian conditions because as Steve Smith has said overnight we don't bother with tour games in India anymore because they just give us green tops yeah. and they're completely irrelevant that, so which is like, true which is true yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can North Sydney number two no. be the secret to get Australia a win in the water no, of the no, no I remember <laughs> <laughs> like no. if someone said that to you 
and you know there is a world where i i wish you were going over and you know that your body was good for it mm. but like it, if someone said to you like listen Bon Andrews, Bear Park 2, that'll get you ready for Nagpur. <laughs> you know, yeah. what do you think? No, it's, it's, I, I, think, I think they're better off playing Big Bash cricket and just really? getting slot because yeah. I feel yeah. like that's more like what they're going to face. Gonna smash. <laughs> yeah. just, the guy's just, Coley's just going to be running down the, down the wicket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with five out, that's yeah. probably the best preparation you could get. Yeah. You know, how would you, how would you go about it? So they get, they're scarified. I think that the main reason, obviously, is to get some bowling workloads up, which you mm. do need to do a lot of because there can be some long days – in the dirt, and I remember the the third test in Ranchi. You know, I bowled seventy seven overs in an innings. You know, yeah, I nearly fine. got to eighty where they were going to give yeah. me a, my own ball myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we were getting we were getting smacked. So I think on those purposes it is, but you just can't you can't. Re- we went to Dubai first. We played a few games there in the lead up, which was a, a two week window in Dubai, which was just great. I mean, they got an aquarium at the the shopping plaza, which was mm-hmm. amazing. The cricket yeah, was yeah. dog shit, yeah. but <laughs> hell of an aquarium. Made no sense. Yeah. Um, but we we train there, and essentially you just acclimatise and get used to the conditions. Um, who knows what the Aussies are going to run out with over there? Are they going to go with Murphy? There's a lot of talk about him, isn't there, being the next big thing? Do they play three spinners? They play two quicks, whatever. Um, but at least they're getting together, maybe getting to know each other. You know, a good bonding session on the piss generally works. So, yeah, yeah. North yeah. Sydney, you know, there's plenty of drinking holes here. Mm. So I, I'm a fan of what they've done. Uh, you think it was a Percy's-based decision? I think Go so. North Sydney. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. The North Sydney number two is actually just a red herring. Yeah. They were going over to Percy's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Get yeah, a good yeah. deal. They Rosie walks behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah, they spotted out there? Have you got a member's card? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Dog Murphy absolutely loves it. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I, there's no way to prepare themselves, particularly maybe Gaz, you know, has got a fair understanding of, of going over there. But the, I remember we played Sri Lanka and we went over in a test tour before we started that one and it was like they did, they refused to bowl spin. And at the end of the day, we batted first and they'd only gotten through like 72 overs because they just right. bowled quicks yeah. and didn't get us a read on any of their spinners. So we were, we were laughing, smacking them around all over the shop, one by an innings and, and whatever else. And then came the first test and Rangana, all that test series, Rangana took 35 wickets yeah. and we're yeah, all so made stupid. So mm. um, there, is a, there is a bit of uh, mindfulness. Obviously we never agree. do that over here. Like we're actually quite hospitable to uh, oppositions oh, who come over. Can you remember the Kiwis coming over and yeah. playing at Blacktown? Yeah. Blacktown. Yeah. Um, and Ryan Carter and Aaron Finch put on 500 yeah. and then yeah. they just refused to go out yeah. and back. Because didn't the, the wicket, wicket actually, was dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> We got number dangerous. 500 yeah. and Brendan McCullough went, no, it's dangerous yeah. to battle. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, we do exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, Isn't that funny? Can I ask a question? Mm. Uh, and it's, uh, it's probably delicate for you because you're still around the traps, you know, mm. and um, I do think there's a parallel world where, like, I mean, you can actually back this up. I texted you like three years ago. I'm sure others did as well. <laughs> I'm like, mate, you should stay fit for this India tour <laughs> anyway. But people would have watched... Um, uh, Ashton Agar bowl at the SCG test and like a, a, from a technical perspective it what stuck out to me was a difficulty in like hitting the same spot ball after ball which mm. people could explain in terms of a lack of red ball cricket and maybe mm. a lot of white ball cricket and mm. the need in in short form cricket especially uh, you know T20 cricket to to continually be varying your lengths all the time, like does would that training of varying your lengths and your pace and your speed and stuff all the time would that hamper your ability to to hit that spot? I think it's two different, yeah, it's two different styles of bowling. Like yeah. I, because you do both really well. Well, I, I T Twenty cricket's almost like bowling a time six of your worst balls. You know, like a cut shot, a Yorker, cross seam slow wide. Mm. Um, you know, whereas whereas Test cricket, as you just said, it's about hitting the same spot, and it takes a bit of time to get into it. And I, like Ashton Agar bowled what fifteen overs for that Test, and I think got really hardly judged on it. You know, mm. everyone was panning him. You know, Mark was saying we should pick Paddy Dooley on the Test tour, who's you know basically bowls those six bad balls and over, yeah. and has a lot of success with it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it takes a bit of time and 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 energy in getting into it. And he's a victim of his own success, Ashton Agar. You know, played a lot of T Twenty cricket, been in a lot of squads, doesn't play a lot, but was T Twenty player. The year, mm. so but I think his just style of bowling, tall, quick, into the wicket, will be accurate when he gets his you know a bit of rhythm up. He's going to be so effective over there to have success. You need one guy attacking, which will be Gaz, I think, mm. and one guy containing. And if you can build that partnership with your spinners, then you, you'll have success. So I think they've got the right style of bowlers over there. Um, you know, shit, who knows what's going to happen? I think it's our best team that's gone over that I can remember in the last twenty years since Gilly. I mean, what are your, what, how are you reading it? Definitely a batting group, anyway. Yeah, I mean, 
if you look at form from both teams, I know there's a lot of Indian fans who are a, a little bit nervous about where their team is at at mm. the moment. But yeah. but then I feel like we've been in that situation many times where we, we take over guys who are in some pretty reasonable form, some good spinners, uh, quicks who can do a job. And, I mean, even looking at the 2017 tour where I thought you guys played exceptionally yeah. well, you went 1-0 up and then you, had, you were ahead by 100 runs or 60 oh, runs in the first innings. Yeah. And then you just that 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 tamasha shit happens in india where like <laughs> they just go through you yeah. and it's like it's just chaos and there's noise and all of a sudden no one can play anymore and like there's a reason they've lost one series in 30 india yeah. and there's a reason like we've won there twice in 40 or 50 years mm. i uh i just think it's worth respecting that history <laughs> and like <laughs> I also so want to ask you. So basically, we're going to get flopped. Yeah. Well, no, I, but I'm really curious because they, they, the, the team are as good as they can be. I think. I mean, they really are, every building block seems to be in place. They're calm. Their players, the players are in form. Uh, you know, that they, they've given themselves every chance yeah. as much as you can when yeah. you prepare by you know, if you're minus by playing the Heat v Strikers and <laughs> <laughs> until we get back, the, until we yeah. get back, until that's, 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 that's worth but, it. So, yeah. but, but I want to ask you, speaking of, you know, fast left arm bowling into the wicket, mm. like a a Axar Patel, are we, can Australia play Axar Patel? I think, Patel? It, yeah, no, like, it, it, so there's no, short answer, no. If, it, if, it's, <laughs> if it's the dust bowls that they served up recently that we've seen and mm. he's been playing sort of the, the second spinner, mm. they could play him, Jadeja, Ashwin, if we have three or four lefties yeah. and you're like, oh, that just looks like a nightmare. You know, yeah. six foot two, yeah. round arm. Yeah, straight. And you just, uh, he doesn't yeah. know which way they're going. Yeah. And into crap that's just going to explode. Into crap. Yeah, yeah it's just going to be a, an Six absolute... foot two into crap. Oh, that's pretty yeah. much it, isn't but it? What's he got, like 65 wickets at 11? It's, it is like under 13 sort of bowling yeah. his record yeah. at tests. I, I mean, I'm intrigued to see how how it goes, but it, it it's going to be an uphill battle. There's no doubt about that. What mm. thirty years since they've lost a series? Did you say mm. or thirty seasons? Thirty, 30, 30 series, I think. Some yeah. some shit like that. Yeah. I'm anyway. sure we'll be corrected in the yeah. comments. Uh, Sock closer to home tomorrow night. The Sixers play the Heat in whatever mm. they're calling it. Uh, basically, just it's, uh, <laughs> it's one of the five in footy. You would call it the prelim. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> five teams out of eight. You know, make the finals, which is a bit rude. But I do have a, I do have a present for you, which is oh, a uh, fantastic. Yeah, Let me get that yeah, on. Yeah. Yes, yeah, show us this bald. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Okay, I'm in mean, your cell. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't say you know, fucking Jason Gillespie over here, but. You know, um, Look at that. So, right, and and how big is the fucking noggin on me? I can't yeah. even get this, oh, I can't wow. even get this yeah. on. No, well, yeah. everyone who's listening to the show must wait while I actually yeah, sort this put out. It Let's on. just get a, yeah, a little a bit present. wider here. I am a Sixers fan anyway. Uh, yeah, good. Home. Yeah, well, while, and, uh, while, 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 <laughs> <laughs> while we're at it, while we're, while we're what's that? that? Oh, what's this little thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you're not watching on YouTube, <laughs> Steve O'Keefe's just given me a Sixers hat as a, as yeah. a gift and then he's brought out his baggy green. <laughs> But this old bad boy, <laughs> I uh, what's it been? Five years? Who am I kidding? It's been. I had it on last night. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't, I've never been this close to a baggy green. Yeah, before, it's uh, still fits well. Oh, that it's looks good, good mate. Uh, looks have good. you like you hear all the stories about sits the guys on you getting their yeah, It's good. It's, yeah. it's one of the nice yeah. fits. But all the guys who are getting their hats eaten by rats. Yeah, in I do. Saves, I mean, yeah. I'm like, how are these rats getting into saves? Yeah. Like, well, well, we had like I, I suppose we're going to do this now because we've we've thrown it away. But now. Mm live show and I'm sorry if, if people who did come to a live show have heard this before like we were just talking about alphas and Mark and Steve War uh, being alphas for, for us Sydney boys and um, uh, you know there was a scenario where like I think 20 years ago like Steve War's um, sadly like, like his house was in danger of being burned down by bushfires and Pidge mm. came over to, to help War's frightened wife Lynette this is all documented like in the paper and stuff and um um, and sort of was around and containing it for six hours. And uh, and then just recently, a couple of months ago, they asked Mark War about it and, and what he was doing um, at the time. And he said, he said I'm, 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 I, I, I don't fight fires, man. Uh, I'm not a firefighter. Very, yeah. uh, and it, it went junior. on to, like, you know, again with bushfires, like um, Shane Warne, the late, the late king, um, mm. donated his... Definitely one and only baggy green hat that he has yeah. uh, for, to to raise money. Yeah, and they, asked Mark, they asked Mark War 
why don't you do that? And he goes, I opened mine from a safe the other day, been half eaten by a rat. Rats. And yeah. then the other day, Steve Smith comes Six. out and goes, mine's been eaten by, by a rat, rat as well. So Dave you know, in the past, he used to try and degrade your hat. Oh, but yeah. now the new thing is obviously to get it eaten by a rat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is like that, like that, that shows the longevity. Yeah. Have that's rats it. got into it? That yep. you've, you've kept it away for such mm. a period of time. That, that That's right. I remember we used to get our baggy blue. And my, Peter Neville used to have this, like, it, you could see the white through the... Yeah, the, yeah, the little tip. How, do you, how, how does you, that happen? Yeah. So we're playing at Dremoyne and I got the hat and yeah. I was like on the edge and I just started rubbing it against the brick wall. <laughs> Is it the weirdest I went thing? like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I put it on like no one would yeah. notice yeah. Yeah. and yeah. everyone just went, have you just ruined your hat? Went, <laughs> no, 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 I played heaps of games. <laughs> Like imagine like an old player, you know, like like oh they've caught me. This is like embarrassing. Some of the great, you know, like let's say, let's say somehow we could exhume, uh, you know, Richie Benno and uh, like Keith Miller, you know, from the grave, mm. and they walk in, and they like, you know, these great New South Welshmen. Well, Keith Miller was born in Victoria, but let's just say he played a lot in New South yeah. Wales. And they walk in, and they're just like, "What the fuck are you doing in your hat?" <laughs> like, no, nah, this this means you're good. <laughs> this is- you don't get it, mate. You don't get it. I remember I played my first game it was five years when I got my second, mm. and. It was about three years into that period or a state of flux. My mum, who used to collect all my cricket stuff, rang me and said, oh, have you got your baggy blue? I don't want, I want to put it up in the trophy cabinet. Oh, that's nice. But she had no faith that I was ever going to wear it again. Yeah. So she yeah. was <laughs> She's Thanks, like, mum. can I take it? And can I get this framed? <laughs> yeah, I was like, mum, I've finished yet. <laughs> I'm still going. I'm still on $12,000 getting sleeves by Dougie Bollinger and Stuart Clark. I'm living my best life, mum. <laughs> it's going to happen, all right? Uh, your dear mum. Yeah, she used to drive you to 17 and 90s training after working, right? Jen, and yeah, sl- and yeah. sleep in the car yeah, no, while you train. This is the yeah, stuff that happens behind the scenes. Yeah, and she's uh, she's coming out to the game on... She comes to the occasional game. They're getting a bit yeah. older, my parents now, but yeah. That's Nurse awesome. all day at night, 10 till 6. Yeah. Deal with drunks. Yeah. Deal with de- degenerates and then... Take you into the CG from Hawkesbury, like from Richmond. Yeah, then I move out and she has to read about the drunk and the degenerates. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, that's a, that's so, that's the real shit that yeah. happens behind the scenes. I yeah, love anyway. that. But mm. but um, you got the heat on Thursday yep. as we're recording on Wednesday. It's the preliminary final or whatever, and uh, mm. it's strange, isn't it? Because like the the BBL changes so much. Like you both sides had a different team last game, and now yeah. um, now you got this game. Yeah, the heat, yeah, the heat are going to have to run out like the vicar's son, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with chicken skin for gloves and the hollowed out leg guard. He's batting three. Who is it again? It's like the COVID's hit them again. Yeah, but They've it's your 100th your game. 100th game for the Sixers, so it's not 100th BBL game because we played six in the Champions League in 2012, so there's yeah. a little asterisk next to it, but yes. I'm claiming it anyway. Yeah. Um, 100th game against the Heat, so we win that, we go back to Perth if we yeah. do beat them. Yeah. Um, so it's you know like with, with the heat we've got the heat coming up and it's a big game but and we don't have Steve Smith we're expected to win we should win really mm. but you know we're at home we've won eight straight but I'm dreading going back to Perth mm. I just you go there I made those comments about Mark mm. McGow and so mm. even though everyone's yep. forgotten it I still remember it yes so and it's so intimidating this this stadium of fifty thousand they're on mm. top of you it's so loud yeah um, they flog us every time we go over there. Um, it's funny, like you know, when you watch from home, they obviously play in the afternoon for TV and stuff like that mm. for the East Coast, who they hate. Yeah. And it's like uh, this will only be relevant to a certain section of people who watch the Wallabies in like the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. But like you know, you'd stay up late and watch the Wallabies yeah, against South, South Africa, Africa yeah. and like they'd be playing. You'd be you'd be hearing as a kid they're playing at altitude, and like the torpedoes yeah. they'd kick would like fly through the air quick yeah. more quickly. Yeah. Everything just seemed a bit scary. It was grainy footage. Like I feel like Perth is like that. The oh, ball flies around. Everyone's wearing the same color. They actually go for starters. Yeah, and it's, it's a, there's a WA thing. It's it is. I mean, there's not much to do in WA. Is there so they all mm, flock to the good. cricket? There's 50,000 there, um, but it is it, it's really short straight. The, the wicket's far, so all of my tricks are just completely gone. Yes, like I'll just take the pace out of this one, and yeah. then Bancroft or Turner's just sitting on yeah. the back foot with a 50 meter straight boundary and yeah. puts you 30 rows back. Yes, and you're like, I saw that, yeah, and you're like, yeah. It doesn't work here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I just feel exposed and yeah. really vulnerable going out there and bowling. I'm like, yeah. I don't. But you I go to Maui and go, what do I have? Mm. And he's like, the slow. I'm like, I can't yeah. bowl back. What about when you bowl? <laughs> you just take the pace off one, slow and outside, off stump, and, and Bancroft might just lean into it and, uh, and and pop it in the air, but then your, your mates don't but, want to take it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Do, do we not want to win over here? <laughs> do, we, do we hate we, winning we, we, and do, do we, we hate just, money? Do we just, yeah, do, we just keep sabotaging our own success. Um, so that was my very... Yeah, <laughs> do what, we when, not when, want to win? Yeah, we, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, just, I'll bowl this... 
okay, the slowest straight one did work. I'll, I'll try the slow one off the pitch. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> straight up. It was noisy. Flipper muttered something, which I couldn't hear even 10 metres away, which threw Dan off. But I'm kind of thinking, I might, they just run into each other, headbutt each other. and let them, like, Yeah, yeah. At least make this comical. Like, yes, you know, yeah, like yeah. At least give us a laugh. Give us, yeah, yeah. And, and give Howie something, yeah, yeah. give Bodgy something, you just know. Just both staring at it was it was disappointing. Uh, but know, who we can never win anyway. It was like Turner's the guy and, and we just haven't figured out a... Isn't he a good player, AT? Yeah. He was a part of our life and he's such a, he's such a great guy, a dry sense of humour as well. Yeah. But he, he was... Um, that was an exceptional partnership, man. That three, three for twenty-two. Things looking good. O'Keefe up and about, and uh, <laughs> yeah. roaring, and and yeah. they just just turned it on. From, it was as though it wasn't three for twenty-two. They just came. That was clinical. They, they did it easy. And yeah. I, I think we're about fifteen, twenty. We butchered the the, the surge, which we're we're so bad at it. Like mm. it's our, the surge overs is we, we, you know where we I think we're worse than the comp. Um, but we actually had a good one. Then we lost four for three. Anyway, game over. We're back in Sydney. If we win, we've got to fly. Yeah. Uh, back to Perth and do it all again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> go through and live that yeah. humiliation. Well, Sixers fans, Sixers fans <laughs> feeling yeah, very stay, confident. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think you. that's just respect to the Scorchers, you know, and the and what they've built. But, oh, uh, I mean, they, you, they, you, when, when, you, when you guys put it together, it's um it's pretty formidable it's too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, okay. Enough of that junk. Uh, okay, <laughs> people complained last week, rightly so, that... W- Cowan and I didn't remark on the uh, just the extraordinary back-to-back hundreds that uh, Smudge made, yeah. and I think that it's not like it's out of the um, realms of conversation now because it's been a week or two. I mean, they they really were something to behold, not just for like the class difference it demonstrated with the rest <laughs> of BBL, but um, in the context of where Steve Smith's batting had got to and then where it's returned to, yeah. you know? Like, like I, I feel post-Ashes, and he's kind of confirmed, it's like every year we would hear from him that he was back, but he wasn't really back. But yeah. he's, he's go- he was doing something in his head. But but now he, he, he seems just, kind of back. Yeah. Is it, would you... I mean, that's his uh, former yeah. housemate. Yeah, that's who right. Who described him as Pac-Man walking yeah, through the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a ball in his hand. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I, it, it was pretty that, extraordinary. That, 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 that was the That Astra- that hundred at the SCG was yeah. the best hundred T Twenty cricket I'd say in life. Like yeah. that was the wicket was tricky, as in you know code for slow and a, a, a shit ape. Really, yes. it was really hard as work to bat on. Been. Yeah, and but he was just like manufacturing sixes, almost got this into six, the gaps. It was like in the gaps. Yeah, of, yeah. six sense of where they were going to bowl, barely miss hit a, a ball. I, I don't think he gave a chance. And then you go to Coffs Harbour and. You know, he'd sort of worked out the dimension. So it's funny, before he goes out to bat, he likes to hit the catches to the fielders and, like, go out and you, he'll go out with his bat and sort of get a feel of the range of the, yeah. the ground. But he hits a low full toss worse than anyone. Yes. And, it, I mean, he got out to Nathan Ellis. It yeah. actually yeah. missed the full yeah, toss. Right. And I'm like, it's it's bizarre. But he sort of goes out, gets his range, gets his feel, gets his hands right, hitting these full toss catches, and then goes out in the middle and... Um, put on what can only be described as a, a genius like batting innings and it stems back from when he was playing England and said my hands are back I'm back baby and he's talking about things that no, none of us understand oh my hands are back my feet are back my hands are back you know it is oh you say that to him oh he did sort of morph into strange. a flamboyant yeah. camp <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah. that's how smart yeah. and so I, I think he, he, when he says you know I don't play for these awards like the AB medal I just played to help my team in that situation. I genuinely believe it because every time he comes back to play for New South Wales or the Sixers, he wants to win games. Mm. And it's it's so refreshing to have these guys who could easily just say switch off or be there for the wrong reasons. He you know, he wanted to play last year in the Sixers for two grand a game, mm. you know, which is like shit. Which is heaps, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's a lot. Uh, and, you know, he just wants to come back and do well. So I, I, I reckon he's going to be pivotal again over in India. What I mean, he's, he averages 60 at test cricket. I think in India the numbers might be a bit better than that, which mm. is just a rarity for our best batters. So, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be expecting big things from him again. Did you note his comments, uh, like, only a couple of weeks ago, not ruling out, uh, like, a not imminent retirement, but uh, some kind of quitting of the game. Like it was a strange hint that he wouldn't, um, I think he tried to clarify once or twice, but he did, he didn't issue a full clarification of it. And I just, it concerned me because he is a, um, he's an abstract guy. What's he going to do with that cricket? Well, (laughs) 
I just, I, I'm like, I really he says hope. It, I'm like, mate, you, when your head gets in the fight, like, mm. a bit like mine, and I'm like, you should give it away. You know, yeah. you're done. This is yeah. a great ending. You're winning. I'm like, yeah. no, I want to go down on my hands and knees begging for one yeah, more yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't care about any legacy. And I'm like, the same with him. I'm like, I can't imagine you doing it. Just so he says that, and you just, you just go, like, what the fuck are you going to do, mate? I chat yeah. to his mate, Rootsy, yeah. Daniel Roots, who's best man at his wedding, and we'll have it, you know, sort of just chat. And we come to that same. We're like, what's he? What else is he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> his mates are laughing at him. Well, I hope um, we've, we've uh, like I was thinking, oh, maybe he's a shrewd. He's a shrewd man financially. Like I, I was, I was hoping it was a maybe it was a veiled message to CA about like you know sort me out. I need, I need, I need value here. I mean, if he's going back to the BBL, like uh, it would, it would have cut that. Uh, that Davey picked up a bit more money or something like I, yeah. I, I hope there was some you something reckon there's a bit of it I, I think pricked that, the ears of um, of um, Nick Hockley and yeah. it's like okay what, 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 do you, what do you need Smudge yeah. because, because I said to him I said to Smudge on the red carpet I was like you don't understand how safe you make Australians feel yeah. you know, and then he whispered in my ears well, well you know give me value <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think uh, yeah I mean his value is in T20 cricket now like he was kind of gone right I've, everyone's like oh he's just a bit of a batter hits gaps he's mm. getting old he's pro- and then he's what he's hit 26 sixes in his last four innings or something so yeah. he's back i think everything's on the table for him yeah. now uh but maybe it is a, sh- a warning shot over the bow of cricket australia say so, you know what i am going to be 34 i've got a back of an 80 year old you know mm. he'll happily admit that i'm yeah. just going to go and play t20s unless you can make it you know mm. just worth t- me while. turn it up a bit <laughs> yeah unless you can turn it up a bit <clears throat> Uh, look, I don't know what you can bring to this because I can't bring a lot, so I won't judge. But uh, apparently South Africa and England are playing some white ball cricket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. England, as far as I understand, are the greatest exponents of this format <laughs> in the history of the game. I mean, I actually believe that. Yeah. But um, but uh, the rampant South Africans have just got their number. Yeah, right. Bavoom 100. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, you'd think with Bazball that, white, you know, Mott Ball, Mott, <laughs> Mott ball, would, Mott ball. <laughs> would be getting it right. But it's yeah. been two good chases. Yep. 300. I watched the back end of the innings against uh, the South Africans bowling and Sam Curran made 30 or 15, yeah. you know, something like that. And I thought, oh, no way South Africans are going to are going to hunt this down. And, yeah, but so they, 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 they chased 343. Out. Yeah, and, uh, and, and got it. And it was just chipped in all the way, right all the way down. I think Miller... Um, sort of got him over the line at the back end with a good 50 maybe. You know, I'm just pulling numbers out here, but... Oh, that's good. Uh, so, South Africa, South Africa, South so, so they're chasing three, two. 343, so that's, two. It wasn't it's a unassailable. Fluke. Yeah, it wasn't a fluke. They, they've they gone back to back and won the series. Now, I, I'm guessing here, and this is going to frustrate people, I'm sorry, but I, I think South Africa, because their entire... Um, their entire cricket is now owned by India and invested in, like, domestic T20 mm. cricket, which is our fault... Mm. Uh, they needed to win that to like make the World Cup or some shit as well. Yeah. So the Netherlands um, have qualified and they haven't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's right. So <laughs> it's good to see other teams winning games, is what I'm saying. But speaking of qualifying for the World Cup, staying in South Africa, Dane van Niekerk, I picked this up last night. The uh, South African women's captain. Yeah. Leggy. Has, Leggy. She played for the Sixers. I remember. Yeah. Has yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. She she's not yeah. been selected for the upcoming. World Women's World Cup, yeah, uh, because she failed a 2k time trial by 18 seconds. <laughs> so, so this in quick info, she's South African captain, absolute gun. Uh, she's coming back from a broken ankle. Uh, she needed to break nine minutes 30 for a 2k time trial, so 445k. Oh, that's not a bad clip. And she missed the mark by 18 seconds at the same time, recorded a PB doing it. <laughs> So, and, uh, so you still kind of celebrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you missed out on the World Cup. That's it's a, a BB. It's a That's sub, what the SNC is telling you. You know, look, like, probably you know, and um, her wife is. This is Mar- Mar- Marzan Cap. Cap. Yeah, she's missing the next game for personal reasons, and I'm just thinking like. South Africa just really knows how to fucking crush a World <laughs> Cup for themselves, <laughs> don't they? You know. So tell us, yeah, what this- is. What is the correlation between a 2K time trial and cricketing success? I mean, that's just shocking to hear, isn't it? 9.30 and you miss out by... And she's a, she, is a, she is a star. I remember... I mean, they've just done away with the 2K time trials now across the board because you right. used to have to do it as a domestic player. Yes. The last one that I did, I taught two calves. The, 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 both the, blue? Both blue. The yeah. physio didn't believe me. I went off and got scans and they turned up like Christmas lights down each one. They thought it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> a medical marvel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. And I spoke to Dan Christie the other day who's retiring yeah. and we're talking about the 2K time trial, not about this 
Bruce case and he said I never run one for 10 years I'd just get a phone call when the day that we had to do them and it would be the S&C saying congratulations mate you've just run a PB 7, <laughs> 743 yes, because you never had to run yeah. them him and Cameron White I think were saying that they just bin them because it has zero relevance to anything that you do in cricket you don't have to run 2Ks ever consistently it's a broader look at your fitness but mm. I mean Dano Van Niekerk runs in off five steps bowls leggies it's just there's no parallel except mm. you know how much do you hate yourself Josh Laley used to say you know like we guys would run 6.30 and he would run 8.30 and he'd go I don't hate myself that much to go to <laughs> yeah, that that's pain right, that's right. like, uh, I can run a 4.15k <laughs> yeah, 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 and I like myself I'm actually, yeah, I've got a really self positive image yeah. guys I'm fine to do this <laughs> that's like, that's, I'm studying yeah, I've got to have yeah. a few prospects I've got balance yeah, guys yeah, in my right. life so yeah they've done away with all these testings um, they should make it a decathlon like a mix of the Billy Madison academic decathlon <laughs> Yeah. With a fitness component, yeah, well, uh, it might be more relatable. You yeah. know, there may be some. I think that would be space. Maybe out there, some of your listeners could come up with. If there's, so there used to be six or seven key tests. Maybe they you know, come up with mm. six or C tests, six That's or right. seven tests that cricketers should all be measured against, yeah. right through from grade level to. Well, what, is, level. what does Shippy say for the sixes? Doesn't he talk about the three Fs, like? You know, fresh family focus. Oh, yeah, or fundamentals. Like he loves his a F funda- words. Yeah. yeah, like we'll have a what the F moment if we get roll for 50. Yeah. You know, focus. Yeah, everything that you've said. So it's a, a language that we bring to the, the team. And, you know, a lot of fun, you know, is probably the obvious mm. one which you'll embed on and, and use. But it, it's just what we use getting around that we can hold ourselves accountable to. And he sort of pumps that message into any team he goes in. He goes, it doesn't have to be F's. Whatever language you want to use is your team. You create it. It's your you know, your destiny and whatever, but uh, yeah, no no 2K time trials with Shippy. He'd prefer fresh, mm. fun and, and beers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Frothies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hopefully he said frothies as well. Uh, just a quick one on the Cricket Australia Awards as well. Uh, mm. Smith takes out the co- top gong for the men, Mooney for the women. Uh, Mooney's just been unbeatable, uh, uh, indefatigable yeah. for... For the whole season, Amazing, um, yeah, just yeah, they just smash everybody all the time. I, 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 look, I don't know what else to say. Um, the moment they lose their first game, there'll be effigies, uh, <laughs> and so, so unfortunately for them, you know, as is the, comp, the the golden law of Australian sport, if any sport reaches a certain height, that then becomes the height that every other is, team is judged against. Which is why the Olympics will always struggle against yeah. the two thousand yeah. uh, Olympics. The Wallabies are going to struggle. The Australian men's test team will always it's be struck. unfavourable, yeah. um, and they're particularly so they woke at the moment Australia. as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're particularly uh, woke. At yeah. The uh, Pat Cummins came out in an interview the other day um, with Andrew Webster and said he didn't know what, what woke means. So, um, <laughs> well, so he's got yeah, he's got yeah. major issues yeah. um, on the domestic political front. <laughs> uh, uh, but I just want to acknowledge that, those that, awards. Is that the only talking point of that? Because for me, I was looking through, and to me, the talking point is Matt Short and his his girlfriend is that that swimmer, the yeah. new power couple in Madison. Yeah, uh, she's a yeah. She dated Kyle Chalmers, Olympic Olympic okay, swimmer. Right. Yeah, so she's. She's got some pedigree in the pool, and it made me think, you know, what other, like, couples, power couples, you know, we've got Warner and Candice, yes. yeah, Fitness, we have yep. Trent Copeland and Kimmy G. Yeah. Um, but at past there, I can't think of too many. So I'm like, this well, is I, great. Well, I was actually there when you met your girlfriend, Lexi, yeah. uh, in, yeah. in London. I mean, yeah. I say that as a power couple. She's a, a woman of the media. Entertainment journalist. Yeah, but she, yeah, just not, yeah, doesn't have much talent, though. Yeah, outside oh, of... It's, that's yeah. good. I yeah. should appreciate, yeah. should appreciate like, that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Found their uh, niche. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sort of touching that. I do, re- <laughs> I, But I do recall on that. You, you guys are in a uh, thriving relationship. And I do recall in 2017, we're out in London. It was State of Origin was on, but like 11 a.m. in London. Yeah. And um, and I think that's where you guys met. That's, and yeah, and like you, any you, good love you, story, you, we met at the walkabout in London. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You'd go, you'd escape. Joey Johns stra- was there. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you escaped Australia for some reason. I can't remember. <laughs> but we were out, and um, and uh, and Lexi, wonderful woman, was talking to you, and I was in your ear, going like, "She's from News Corp, mate. She's she, she's you actually yeah, you, be, you actually need to be careful." You'd always thought that there was some sort of hidden agenda, agenda there, yeah. But she had no idea who I was until I told her. <laughs> told her to Google me, but go through yeah. the. Skip the first three stories; they're irrelevant. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was been paranoid that day. I don't know why. Anyway, and um, uh, okay. So congratulations to the award winners. Yeah, Matt Travis Shorty's Head. Up, yeah. Travis Head. Teddy, Tess, Lance Plana, Morris. Lance Morris. I think the wild thing and yeah. uh, Uzi. 
What's he got some what's stuff he got as well? Some, uh, community work awards. Uh, I'm going to bring up the Dave women's Warner. awards soon. Okay, India, New Zealand are playing some ODIs and T20s. Uh, we, we covered a couple of them last week. Shubman made a double and, and Coley scored some runs, so they're just getting mm. ready for us. But um, <laughs> India won the ODIs 3-0. New Zealand went one up in the T20s uh, at, at the start. It was 176 plays 155. Yeah. Daryl Mitchell, 59 off about half those balls. Uh, not and India leveled in luck now. They chased 99 and got off the last ball on what was described as just a horrendous wicket. Like, like really you know, people want to say, yeah, tonight. yeah, we're we playing in luck now. I don't think so, but they're just getting them all ready. Uh, yeah, like we run it through our own prisms. But uh, I think Suyukumar Yadav again, man of the match, uh, but Sky. very slow. You know, like only when to run a ball in a, a hundred plays a hundred game. Yeah, okay. um, and the deciders tonight in Ahmedabad. So uh, I don't know. Mm. That, that, and I suppose we can expect a dust bowl as well, uh, given yeah. that the final test of the Border Gavaskar Trophy is there. <laughs> uh, so uh, congratulations to India or New Zealand or whoever's going to win that. Um, just on India, Sock, really VJ announced his retirement this week. I think uh, 60-odd tests, uh, um, a, a career to be proud of. The angle I'm taking with it is that you knocked him over a couple of times. Twice, uh, yeah. You knocked him, yeah. Twi- <laughs> so <laughs> what were his weaknesses? Shall we run, shall we run through yeah, them? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of them was at Ranchi. Yeah. No, I went... Uh, Stumped? I, it was day one of the test match. I didn't have much up my sleeve, so I bowled over the wicket. And it was, I think it was the over before lunch. You know, yeah. when your captain's usually like, just put your head down. Yeah. I'll get through this. You know, get Mate, through No, one. you got him in Pune as well. Okay, yeah. I got my... Oh, you've in Pune. Yeah. I got my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he ran past one over the wicket. Yeah. Missed the foot marks and everything. But it was just... He's got he's got beautiful eyes. Yeah. But in the in the moment. A bit like yours, blue, mm-hmm. but piercing eyes that, mm. you know, are nice off the cricket field. But on the cricket field, are like... Very, very intense. Um, do you, but, would you remark on that on the field? Like, I like your eyes, that sort of thing. You yeah, yeah, that's something I would do to try yeah. and, yeah, just sort of really wig them out yeah. a little bit, you know, yeah. not cover to their batting. Just, wow, well, you're really. Have you ever really thought about that, like, from a vocal perspective, or do you, are you just more just straight up aggression? Yeah, or? it's aggression. Trying to hide my own insecurities and shortcomings in the game, I try to sort of put that back onto the you, opposition. You won't remember this, but played against you at Benson's Lane because you don't remember I my don't existence remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um which is which is good but yeah. we uh we beat you at Benson's Lane once in mm. once and I made 27 and uh after the as we shook hands you said well struck to me so you said something nice right. and I remembered that yeah yeah, yeah. okay that. <laughs> so got 27. Yeah. But that's a good score, right? First go. That's yeah. that's worth for it. For me, yeah. it was. It was for me, mate. You know, my, my, so, I actually took a stump from that game. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and my mum's put it up in the trophy room. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's 27. It's 27 at Benz's Lane, mum. Yeah. This is 27 at Owen Earl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway. Great okay, uh, congratulations, Murali VJ and Sock knocked you over a couple of times. Uh, just to issue a correction, uh, last week I said that Joe Root did some shit in the South African league. He's not even in that league. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) He's in the the IL20, T20. Oh, God, I got that wrong. How many are happening at the moment? So Mm. where's the IL20? You want to get your hands on any of that? Again, I've tried. I've tried. uh, But it it turns out left arm figure spitters that are bowling, you know, literally on the street in Mm. India can do it better than what I can. Right. So, yeah, they're not looking for fat, balding, depressed Mm. Uh, you know, middle-aged, left-arm, slow bowlers. Like, right. Jeff Lawson sends me messages and he still refuses to call me a spinner. He just calls me a slow left-arm bowler. Does he? he yeah. Like, He's a lovely God. man, isn't he? <laughs> Jeff, yeah. Still the best slow, best yeah. slow left-arm I'm like, I am the only slow left-arm yeah. bowler in the comp. I've only met... Uh, him briefly but uh, he strikes me as the sort of guy that like he, he'll, he'll make those apparently like um, jovial remarks but they just seem to have an edge to him you know what I mean yeah <laughs> yeah the kind of cutting you know yeah. trying to be really nice giving yeah. me an uppercut and then you know uppercut and then picking me up in the same sort, uh, of, love, sort of yeah. comment you know yeah. uh, but no I appreciate it. thanks, thanks, thanks yeah, yeah 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 yeah, but um, no, the answer is no. I've never been picked up in any any overseas competition. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move. Uh, is there anything else in cricket you want to talk about? No, anything on your, on your mind? Yeah, You're sitting here in yeah. your baggy green. You can yeah. sort of, the, the floor's yours. It's it's hot. It's really hot up here, mm. and uh, it stopped shaking, which is good. So. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I know this is a bad <laughs> idea. There's no doubt about that. But um, all right, let's move on to some questions from the audience. Hashtag AskTGC. Um, I should note that these shows are brought to you by. 
uh, T20 Stars, get all of Watto's kit, shamewatson.au uh, for his book, t20stars.com for all sorts of uh, discounts and stuff like that. And we appreciate their help all summer. Good cricket uh, And um, Ponting Wines as well. Ooh, get on to Ponting Wines. You're going to get 20% off if you put in the code Get a few, which is obviously um, <laughs> what Ricky Ponting used to say to people at 18 years of age when they made 30 or 40. Get a few today, did you? Because uh, he was really confident and a bit of a freak, really. Um so appreciate those two guys' support. I think Manscaped's back next week as well. And just another reiteration, if you do want to get behind this podcast, here goes he's back next week, uh, gradcricket at gmail.com, soliciting all uh, inquiries. Harry Ryan writes in sock uh, mm. and he says just a quick one here we're, we're gonna do a couple uh, boys i was listening to an early edition of the pod where you were appreciating the skill of milking singles mm. swiftly i felt the anger gathering as i recall a coach saying to me if you can just push three or four singles and over and put the bad ball away then you were going at 10 and over <laughs> my questions <laughs> is this something just something that was said to me or did you hear this too is this an example of t20s taking over or was this justified as i had scored three brackets two of 44 cheers <laughs> So, so like, well, for starters, I don't know how to three, four singles plus a four gets you to ten it over. Yeah, it well, gets, the bad ball has to, to go for six, six. I think. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty easy. It's a simple game. It, it's amazing. You have chats with Greg Shippard, and he wants you to have risk-free innings, as you know, yeah. but still make one sixty. I'm like, yeah, it, we have to play, yeah. and then you know, you're always judged yeah. by it's a good be risk. aggressive, it but don't over. get out. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it has, it, you know, you. That's the beauty of cricket and being a coach is you can su- summarise it in such a simple, beautiful way. But it is rid- hitting singles is the hardest thing I think to do in cricket. Steve Smith calls it like it's his own artwork. When he goes out to bat, he goes, "It's actually a, uh, a you know, it's a really hard way to dissect fields and hit deep point, hit, hit deep square, hit mid on, hit mid off. Like it's actually a completely different set of skills that you need as a cricketer. Mm. So this old adage of just hitting a few singles mm. uh, is." You know, I think that's so what much I find it. crazy, mate. Watching pro batters, like, it, it, and you don't notice it immediately, but the amount of times they will hit long on, long off, uh, longs on and off, or mm. deep points, and that ball is travelling like to the boundary. If, if you're an if you're a park player, an <laughs> amateur player, yeah. like just getting the ball <laughs> to, to the, the boundary match. is like a um is a huge achievement. Like yeah. like th- these guys just middle the ball so often. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like, you know, with, with Steve, because he's sort of the yardstick, you know, you watch him at the SCG and he would change his technique, you know, and for even the smallest change in anything that I did, you know, open up my front, it created this whole sense of insecurities and I'd watch my front foot and then I'd yeah. get knocked over and go, oh, I'm going back to what I know. Um, but he's able to do it on the fly, like change his stance like he did at the SCG. Test, you know, they'd put in two mid-wickets and no, no backward point, so he'd hit balls off leg stump through point. Yeah. It's, it just blows my mind and how easily he makes that makes that mm. look um so yeah i mean i feel you i feel your pain there mm. harry isn't it yeah. well i remember like i remember playing a pg's match i won't say who our coach was at the time it's sort of known but like there was a there was a period i don't know if you guys went through this but like we walked in and there was a whiteboard that had the number 250 on it <laughs> and then it 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 broke down 250 into different segments of overs like one to ten ten to thirty you know yeah, like yeah, 30, yeah. and and Within that was just numbers divisible by two fifty, <laughs> like like or, that you could you could add up to make two fifty, and that's simply what he wanted. Yeah. With with like very little reference to who their bowlers <laughs> the were, the <laughs> wicket. Just, just I just this is how it's like if I put it looks. on a board, yeah, <laughs> these yeah, numbers yeah. maybe yeah. they'll get that, and then we go in and just crosses next to them. No, you didn't do it. It's like oh, well, if he just put. It's like, oh, what do you mean to do? Like, oh, like, you know, like it's like this idea with batting is like oh. If I just say we should do this thing and not make any reference to the fact that batting is an open skill that requires a response with a whole to bunch of variability, stimulus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and what, say, what if you're on 250 or 40 overs? Yeah. Is that just. It, well, yeah, that's the perfect that's game, it. coach. Yeah, Off we declare. come. Oh, yeah. Shippy used yeah. to do the same thing. I remember he came up with this great batting plan at. at, at uh, I think it was here in North Sydney. He came in as a, a sub coach and we're playing a four day game. And, oh, this is how we're going to chase down mm. 350 on the last day. We'll bowl out within the first hour of, on the <laughs> fourth right. day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. 70. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it was the greatest speech of all time. Yeah. Well, like, that, that, this is it. We've unlocked the key. This is how coaching, we're get it done. Coaching's funny like that, isn't it? Like, I, I yeah. think coaching is so. Um, uh, like immature as an industry in cricket, which is awesome. It should be um, an opportunity for people who are really good at it as, as its own skill. But like, I, I remember being back at the club one day, look at us just comparing stories. You're wearing a baggy green and I'm talking about a bit of no, time yeah, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we went back to the club after um, first grade, chased down like 300 against St. George. And someone was explaining to our coach, I won't, again, won't say who it was, like um, who asked, oh, what did everybody make? And as, as, as the person was going through what everybody made, he was like, it was like, you know, 30, 50, 
29, 80, like it, he was nodding, going like, "Yep, yep," like, "Like, yep, that's what you got to do." Like, 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 as as though he <laughs> sort of instilled this idea: you've got to make these runs right. to to, to make three hundred. And, and if you guys continue to do that, the other thing he used to, I remember that. He, another thing he used to say was, "Um, this is it's like Brent stuff." He used to go like, he used to sit in front of us and he go like, he goes, "Gents, how many balls does it take to make a hundred? People be like, I don't know, one one twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He go one. Right. And, and like I'm, I'm like autistic. I'm like, no, it doesn't. No, this is, it doesn't. This, this is not possible. I, I can't, no, you can, how are you gonna do that? Eighteen nineties England, you know, like hit it to a tree. They can't find it. Just going back and forth. You know, like that's how my head was. It doesn't take one ball. Anyway, uh, I don't know, Harry. Um, all right, Nick, Nick, Nikki writes in. Uh, great to have a female contributor. Um, don't know how you if you want to touch this at all, sock. But um, I'm not inferring as to do with you, but genuinely. Thank you, Rice. Boys, a question. I'm in the crowd tonight. This was written a couple of weeks ago. I think uh, we had our Melbourne show. I'm in the crowd tonight, and I'd like to tell a story about the time I had group sex with an ex-England cricketer. He played one test and a handful of ODIs. I don't know who that is. Mm. It seemed there was a few of them back in the day. Um, can I now claim his cricket achievements as my own, and will I be accepted amongst an international cricket circuit? <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't read this. Will they understand my story and welcome me into the VIP area and want to hear more about this one night in Barbados. Thank you, Nikki. A bomb. Oh, look, I there's know. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, I didn't fully read that. <laughs> look, Nikki. Um, congratulations. Yours, I don't think you can claim them as your own. Uh, but if you get some kind <laughs> of, uh, you know, status by extension, then... Um, there's, uh, you know, I, I know people like, I know people, <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, I just wanted to read that question because, you know, is that the first is, is female, a, is that the first female contributor? I wouldn't say it's the first, but I, just, I wouldn't say it's the first in five years, but uh, you probably it's find, probably hand count hand on one or two hands. Thank you, Nikki, and yeah. good luck in your endeavours. <laughs> um, final one, final one, a non writes in. Uh, dear the three amigos brackets two. Thank you for that. Yeah, mm. few, few yeah. that later. <laughs> the judgment's online. Yeah, someone's just got to find it. Um, uh, the, I I am I am a university lecturer in the UK, and I'm currently undergoing an annual performance review. It's suggested we watch recordings of our lectures and read student feedback to help us improve. Despite this undoubtedly being an invaluable source of information to help me remove errors or bad habits, I've never done this. Indeed, ever since my own university days, I've never given much attention to any feedback. Although you may initially assume this is classic, classic coatish behaviour, i.e. not caring what anyone thinks and carrying on regardless, I think the origin of my inability to self-reflect comes from my experiences in junior cricket. I hope fellow failed cricketers might be able to offer some empathy. I used to play junior county shit in the UK, <laughs> like every other remotely posh white kid has. <laughs> not knowing this at the time, I had the assumption that I was a good player, and with a bit of luck, I might make it as a pro. I presumably made that presumably made me an unbearable little cunt with a massive, <laughs> with a massive overprivileged chip on my shoulder. <laughs> However. A school project for PE class required us to make a video of our technique at a sport. I chose to make a video about my batting technique. I took my dad's video camera to the nets and took to pumping my friend's generous throwdowns 360 degrees. I always assumed I looked a little like David Gower or Marcus Treskothic. Limited foot movements, but perfect weight transfer and crisp, decisive striking. Upon watching the replay, though, I was fucking appalled. Without wanting to seem crass or offensive, well, you already have, the, the best description I can give is that I look like someone with Parkinson's disease. <laughs> I, I apologise if some find this offensive But the poor balance, shuffled movements and dye coordination was all there The only shot that looked remotely decent was my back foot straight defence Where the ball clips the inside edge So it looks like I intentionally pushed it to the onside Once I do a few shadow bat leg glances immediately after my world crumbled down around me. Uh, I remember asking myself, am I not good? Is this what everyone sees when they look at me? Is this why dad doesn't come to watch me play? Or is it because I left his camera at the nets? <laughs> Regardless, the immediate visual feedback has scarred me. Living in blissful ignorance of your own failures is a much warmer place to be. I think of this incident a lot. For example, when I was 19, my girlfriend at the time suggested we video ourselves having sex. <laughs> I thought it was a great idea, uh, although I probably would have agreed to anything if there was the slightest chance of adding another 25 seconds of intercourse to my tally. <laughs> However, just before we got going, I suddenly remembered my cricket incident. Although I may think I look like Michelangelo's David with a massive penis, I will presumably look like an overboiled Brussels sprout with Michelangelo's David's penis. <laughs> 
Never before has flaccidity arrived so quickly at my door. I ran over to the camera, turned it off and deleted the file. I made some excuse that hackers might steal it and blackmail us. I didn't have sex for another four years. <laughs> Nearly there. Despite this, I'm confident I made the right choice. I'm happy to be in sheer ignorance of how I look during my occasional chop. Ugh. And I can blame my poor sex life on modern culture, feminism, or some other incel shit. I can also blame my mediocre lecturing on the students. It's the children who are wrong in the voice of Seymour Skinner. <laughs> But I cannot blame anything other than myself for my shitty cricket ability. So I guess my questions are, should I carry on with this cycle of denial or denial mediocrity, but ultimate contentment? Should I reflect more on my life so I might develop as a person, but risk emotional breakdown? <laughs> That's a very big question. <laughs> Do you ever rewatch your old stuff with the intention of self-improvement? Should I buy my dad a new camera? <laughs> Anon. I... I mean, I'm starting to have visuals there of myself, like oh, yeah. basically going through very similar things there. Mm. Yeah, not feel myself having sex. That's that's one, but just too scared of how bad it all. Look. <laughs> oh yeah, I and I do not look at any cricket yeah. highlights as well for that year. It, it it seems so much better in your own head. So live in that yeah. lie for as long as possible. Yes. Yeah. Have you? I mean, oh, mate, where, where I, you, when I was once again, are you, are are you, you a filmographer? Are you, I was. You set the handicap up. I that. was uh, <laughs> once so so once again I, I feel like I'm trying to get my small to medium sized penis out and swing it around on this show because you were w literally wearing a baggy green before, <laughs> figuratively speaking small to medium <laughs> small to medium uh, and um, like when, when I was uh, 16 I was invited to a spinner's day at the SCG by Steve Rickson, who was a then New South Wales coach, yeah. right? And mm. at the spinner's Very day... Very hard-nosed, grizzled... Was. Leader type, yeah. Um, Alpha. And at the day was um, McGill, Michael Bevan, and a couple of other, like, first graders I didn't know because I was 16. But I got a day off school, and um, I was like, mate, this is fucking happening for Pezza here. Yeah. You know, the old yeah. SCG in Dornets. It was, And I was playing yeah. North and shit. And I, go yeah, to, yeah, I don't need to be talking about all this shit, but I, just yeah. to set the scene. I Like, this was a... And it was a hilarious day. I this recall a, a couple deal. of Stuart McGill comments that have more context now. But um, <laughs> it was 2001, and the New South Wales coach was there, and it was awesome. And part of it was like, um, you know, we, were, we, we got filmed bowling. We bowled to the state side yeah. and we got filmed in the process. And one thing I remember is I was bowling with Stuart McGill just to warm up and the ball was like, he, he could bowl a wrong and, and a leg spinner off the SCG and door nets where firstly you could hear it fizzing, but secondly, yeah. you would catch the ball at your head after it bounced. Like it, yeah. it had so much. Yeah. He put so much Working on it. That was yeah. one thing. But the second thing was we got filmed and to that point, I'd never seen myself bowl. And yeah. I just thought I looked like Shane Warne. Yeah. I just did. In, your, yeah. in my head. Yeah. I just, I, 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 I yeah. was trying to just be him. Yeah. Badly. But yeah. I, I thought I was. And, and I was like deeply, traumatically mortified to yeah. see what I actually looked like yeah, yeah. when I saw Aware, my... And it was in yeah. front of all the people you, as well because everyone did, got you'd to... You'd eaten the forbidden fruit and mate, really got to see life for what it was. I <laughs> could, like, I did not look like him at all. That moment you all. became a man. It, it was. It, it really it was like a rite of passage. And I think everything went downhill from there. So if there's a lesson... It is. It is. Do not reflect. Do not look at yourself at all. Do not seek any feedback from anybody. Live a life live, of ignorance. Live a li of blissful ignorance. Yeah. Tell your own stories to yourself. Join a cult-like landmark. Uh, do not tell make yourself your own story. Your medium to small size <laughs> penis. That's right. Medium to small. Yeah, it's like a fast medium. Medium fast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I suppose I'm medium. Yeah. I'm small. You small to medium. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for enduring this podcast, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Great way to end. Uh, our great friend Hugo is back next week. Uh, Thank, God for that. Thank God Massive thanks to Steve O'Keefe. Mm. This is, Steve uh, responded with 24 hours notice yeah. to put this show on. Um, I note you took the baggy green off during the group sex question. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. So you put it back on. Um, we're really grateful. So, so are the fans. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to this. And we'll be returning to normal transmission uh, next week before we go to India. If you're in Delhi, get some tickets, ladies and gentlemen. Any final words? You can have a final one. No. No, that's it. You've summed it up. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, I didn't recall. Oh, shit. I didn't recall. <laughs>